audacity to believe is not just the tagline. It's a powerful thing. When you do important things, significant things, you actually have no, and this is not a fancy thing to say, you have no competition. If you're not born Kobara, you're a foreigner. How do I become the thinking partner to entrepreneurs? This puzzle upbringing, you know, taught me a lot about business. At a time when black people were not allowed to sit on park benches, these gentlemen said, we're going to create an institution that's going to empower black people. The biggest thing for me that never made sense was why these puzzle shops remain the same for 20, 30 years. Introducing Colorspace, a stock photo platform dedicated to showcasing images of black people. Whether you're a professional photographer or you just know your way around a smartphone, sign up, submit your photos and start earning through your creativity. Visit www.colorspace.co.za. Welcome to Spaza Talk. Mshuti Wabashuti is in the building. And this is a special episode, actually. Yeah, it's uh, Spaza Talk Plus. It's a Spaza Talk uh, Pro. Spaza Talk Plus Pro. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is a really, really special episode to us. A really special human being is in the building. Mm-hmm. I'm talking to you guys on the camera first because I don't want to show you who he is just yet. Yeah. But if you watch our previous episode, which is episode 57, we. 58. Yeah, 58. Um, we talk about who this person is just a little bit. He walked into the house while we were recording that. But now we are finally here, Lems. Yeah. Our second guest. Our on second Spaza. on Spaza Talk. And this man, his resume is longer than the Golden Highway. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And the Golden Highway, yeah, don't. Some yeah, you figure na se vali. Hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> good. Bohosi, how are you? I'm good, brother. I'm good. How are you doing? I can't complain at all, man. I'm amazing. I'm blessed. I'm so thankful you're here. Um, I know earlier on when we were testing the mics, I asked you, what did you have for breakfast? But can you tell us what you had for breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I ate a plum and a double cream coconut yogurt. Mm. Okay, healthy nice. living. A healthy eh? living, yeah. So we can tell he's definitely a healthy living. Once man. every <laughs> month. You know, you gotta... Balance the equation. Balance, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your body <laughs> must be shocked once in a while. <laughs> uh, but because, I mean, look, uh, Lebs, I want to give over to you, but I always say to our guests, we can read your resume as much as we want, but I think talking to you, the person is what's going to help us. So please, can you introduce yourself to our Spaza Talk audience, who you are? We might miss some titles. Mm. We might say some things mm-hmm. wrong. Uh, like we said, your resume is quite long. And don't be modest. Eh? Yeah, please don't be modest. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. That's a, that's a, that's a tough one. But uh, my name is Bukhosu uh, Mutsehwa. I'm a father uh, of eight. Uh, I think that's my biggest uh, life challenge. Uh, you know, I think raising a son, uh, or, or a child gives you perspective. Uh, you know, since I've been with him full time, I realized that I was stressing for nothing. Career stuff is easy, guys. Yeah. I <laughs> yeah. know. What do you it's, mean career stuff? I know, no, it's easy. Oh yeah, it's like easy. finding a job. Briefs. And all Briefs are easy. Briefs. <laughs> That's what I mean. Okay. Briefs. Briefs. You should never, st- if you, if you want to gain perspective on briefs, Raise a child. <laughs> you will realize that, no, these briefs are... Because it's know, not, it, it doesn't follow the strategy that I you... No, 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 no. <laughs> you're thinking, you're constantly thinking on your feet. There's no model. There's no formula. Yeah. You like, you need to make things up on the way. And those things must be top notch. Yep. You know. Yeah, outside of that, uh, I'm currently chief strategist and founder of Thinkinia, mm. uh, as well as founder and organizer of the One Human Summit. Uh, so my background is in advertising. Uh, I've worked at a number of advertising agencies, local, uh, some network agencies, uh, but now I'm on the entrepreneurial journey. Oh, nice. So you're, nice. Running a, you're running your own shop right now? I'm running my own shop right now. So is it something we can talk about? Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, what, what kind of shop are you running? I mean, you are... You look like a well sought, we're not even a look like your resume says you're a well sought after man. So, what are you doing now that we should be following? I mean, let me check intrap- my bank account. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I hope you're not using F&B because they've been cleaning F&B yeah. accounts lately. Yeah. <laughs> 
um maybe let's talk about uh you know in, in the next 12 months well, 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 I think my bank account will define sought after. Mm. Um, you know, I think that's the perfect definition. Sweet. But if it's for vibes, ah, no, it's not working. Yeah. Uh, so I consult from a strategy perspective, uh, you know, marketing, brand building or branding, advertising, communication, uh, business. So I consult for both advertising agencies as well as directly with clients. Okay. Um, and then, also building the One Human Summit as a as a startup, uh, which is quite an interesting journey, uh, you know, because everything is bootstrapped. Um, with this kind of business, there isn't a an obvious place where you can gain or get funding. Yeah, um, you know, if you're building like a tech startup, we know where you can go. Or For sure, you should know where you 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 you're supposed to go. For sure, you know, I, I mean. Uh, Cape Town is becoming our own Silicon Valley. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there are always conversations around where people can get funding. Uh, even businesses that are sort of like industrial, you are able to go to a funder, venture capitalist, financial services. But for things like this, it's like you, you're just going to have to make it on your own. Yeah. Uh, so currently I would say those are the two things that I'm currently focusing on. I mean, if you add my son, that's three. That's three things. <laughs> <laughs> That's sure. a business on its own. That's man. a business on its own. It's, yeah. it's got expenses. It's got, I kid you not, today he lost his shoes. Eish. You know, so I was like, now the cost, it's like, now we're going to have to spend on shoes. Why? Eish. You know, uh, yeah, no. Professionally thinking here and the One Human Summit. Nice. Nice ones. And nice. before we get there, I mean, I always say this is what you just mentioned. I think you more than that. Okay. Um, okay. And the reason why I say you more than that is because I want to know where you grew up because that might have defined yeah. uh, some things that you currently do right yeah. now. And in, to some degree, our childhood does play a role. So, can you tell us where you grew up and what things during your childhood sort of like shaped what you do now? I mean, we've got in a note here that you grew up in a home with a spazzle shop. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so I grew up in, I was born in Kopara. Um, were you guys born in Kopara? Yeah, no, I was born in Tembisa Hospital, bro. Okay. Yeah. And you, I'm all the way from Kizidin, so I can't even remember this. this <laughs> no, no, if, if, if you were not born in Kopara, you were a foreigner. Oh, damn. <laughs> and, 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 so okay. Yeah, no, no, no. So I was born in Kopara, uh, grew up in Maryland's Zone 2, and then we moved to Bram Fisherville. Uh, so the middle end setup, I also found out or realized as I was growing that uh, it wasn't actually my home, mm-hmm. as in it wasn't my father's house. Uh, it was a family house. Okay. Uh, but I thought it was our home until, uh, you know, my dad applied for an RTP house, go Bram Fischer. Um, and that's where I spent most of my time uh, growing up. Mirrorlands, uh, we were just, my dad was working. Uh, he was working at Aircon at, uh, CNA. Mm. Um, is CNA still around? Yeah. Uh, but they're struggling. A eh? few. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's few. quite I mean, a few. It's PNA now that you can it's see. P- yeah. 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 He used to work at, uh, CNA and then, uh, he lost his job or, you know, the job ended. Um, and then we moved to Bram Fisherville. Bram Fisherville. So then I, th- I guess he became entrepreneurial in that sense, uh, where now it's like, where's the money going to come from? Yeah. So he opened up a, a, a spaza, uh, which was, you know, a, a big feature in most of my, uh, upbringing. Yeah. Um, so yeah. How nice. would you say it shaped you? I mean, it's Paza Shop is like... It's, it's a, like, there's a lot of experiences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you experience a, a lot of different people yeah, to correct. say, you know what and, I'm saying? And, and we, our analogy as Paza talk is like similar to that thing. I want to be at the Spaza Shop and, yeah, and yeah. they discuss and they talk about things, gossip yeah. happens and so forth. Yeah. How did that even, like, what role did that even play having them? I mean, like friends, community... Yeah, no, I think looking back now, uh, uh, I think it's, 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 it's an amazing experience, right? Where as you are running this puzzle, you, uh, you essentially become an unofficial leader as a family, mm-hmm. you know, of the community. Sure. Unofficially so, but people look up to the family. People look up to you. 
uh, for various things. One of those is help. Um, so engaging with a lot of people that really helped in understanding uh, people, understanding behavior, sure. uh, understanding psychology, uh, as well as, you know, of, 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 of the business. And I think most, most of us who grew up in, or who grow up in puzzle shops, we tend to downplay, uh, you know, the significance of growing up because for a lot of families in the township, a puzzle shop is not like an official business. Yeah. Uh, that's typically the mindset where you, you run as puzzle shop, but there's not, if, if it's a big family, sometimes you find that you run as puzzle shop, but there are people that still go to work. Sure. Um, the aspiration is always to go to work. Um, but, it, but, but in hindsight, I think, uh, this puzzle upbringing, you know, taught me a lot about business, managing margins, uh, you know, uh, managing costs. Yeah. Managing, uh, you know, a business that's not profitable. Managing or dealing with suppliers. Uh, so it's a, it's a, it's, it's, it's quite a bit, uh, to deal with. You know, when you speak about as puzzles where people gather, mm -hmm. uh, the guys from the hood, they kept me company, you know, because it can be lonely sure, where, yeah. you're, you know, you're just standing there waiting for someone <laughs> to come and nobody comes. And then one gent comes and then it's two gents. And then, um, you know, you end up, you know, eating some, some of the stock, uh, you know, because you have to incentivize them in some, for some sure. for chilling there. They yeah, don't chill for free. Yeah. No, they won't chill for free. I yeah, eleven and I you know, um, so, so, so yeah, uh, chilling with the guys, uh, and, and, and you see different personalities, you see, uh, you know, different lives that yeah. people lead. You hear a lot of problems, mm. a lot of challenges, a lot of the things that people are dealing with. Uh, you hear that in that setup, uh, next thing you know, there's five of us, we're talking about nonsense. Yeah. Sometimes it's constructive. Sometimes it's like, you know. Let's do it, James. We're gonna do it. Yeah. You know, we're gonna get out of here. Yeah. Um, nice. Nice. So, so there's the managing or, or being part of that those conversational, uh, you know, that are inspiring, sometimes depressing, sometimes funny, sometimes irrelevant. You know, um, yeah. But looking back, uh, you know, in terms of how it influences or sort of like gives context to the advertising world. Um, you know, you understand also the power of brands. Yeah. Uh, when, when you stock different brands, you know, there are iconic heritage brands that you would stock. Yeah. Uh, they tend to be slightly more expensive. Mm, mm. The margin is higher there. And then you start to introduce, uh, you know, uh, new uh, affordable ones, new affordable yeah. ones, uh, different brands. Sure. Uh, you know, you see the purchasing behavior of people beginning of the month. They will buy that, you know, all gold. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, and then as you know, they'll buy a no-name brand. Uh, you know, it's quite interesting. But puzzle shop mainly um, they stock original brands, so to speak. Um, you know, because those are brands that are trusted for sure. Uh, and they, they, the perception is that they last longer. Uh, and you know that if it's your last money that you're spending, uh, it's good money. For sure, not, yeah. sure. It, you know, you're not going to be wondering whether. Did it, was it a good idea to spend, you know, 30 bucks on that or not? You, 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 you are certain that you spent your money wisely. <laughs> what was nice. your, what, what's your take on like what's happening now with Spaza Shop setting illegal products? You know, it's, 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 it's quite interesting, you know, interplaying with my career as Spaza Shops. In fact, I was started thinking here, yeah, this was afterwards, um, was that the, 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 the biggest thing for me that never made sense was why puzzle shops remain the same for 20, 30 years. Yeah. yeah. For me, it was like, yeah. how? Like, what? And then I'm like, you know, you get into this world, you start to understand things more commercially. Uh, then you're like, pick and pay is this puzzle shop. Like, <laughs> Grand it's shop. Yeah. On a, a bigger scale. It's, it's a puzzle yeah. shop yeah. on a bigger scale. Yeah. It's, 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 it's checkers, you know. Now they produce their own product, which is not a foreign concept that a puzzle shop can produce mm -hmm. its own concept, but that's how they started. They, 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 they purchase a uh, stock and then they resell, they add a margin. That's, sure, yeah. you know, that, so for me growing up was like, you know, you grow up in a street, there's a 
uh, I remember in our street, there was a place called uh, Peter's Place. Sure. Uh, it was like that, for, like forever. You know, you grow up, uh, you buy sweets, you know, you grow up and then it's like you start buying bread and then they've also got a tavern next door. Now they send you for beer. Yeah. Now you're older. You're like, you know, it's like it, it doesn't feel, doesn't yeah. seem like there's actual growth. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if it's in the mindset or, <laughs> you know, it's like we're just comfortable, um, you know. But I was trying to solve for that with the Thinking Here brand. Uh, because thinking here is a combination of thinking and entrepreneurship. Mm. So the thinking was using my expertise from a strategy perspective, how do I become the thinking partner to entrepreneurs? Uh, and then through that, we can then start thinking uh, beyond our immediate uh, geography. You know, we can start thinking beyond. Uh, we're not even thinking about franchising. Uh, you know, it's almost like if you want to open open up your own spaza, open sure. up your, but if I have a spaza and it's growing, uh, there are no franchises. I think, um, you know, which was like, for me, it never made sense uh, why spaza shops remain spaza shops as they are. And sometimes sure. they're very successful within that scale, but the sure. growth mindset is not there. Yeah. I think growing up in the hood, they were like, the much bigger spaza shops, your cash and carry, yeah. where you'd find almost everything. It was similar to your to your shop, right? Where they would have a small Ayana franchise, maybe it's two mm. or three within the hood, yeah. things like that. Yeah. But there's something you touched on when we spoke earlier. Uh, you talked about limited stock shelving. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> and <laughs> I think please elaborate on on that on that yeah. model and how it works because some people don't understand it. Yeah, yeah. I understand. Yeah. So, so the, the, the limited stock on shelf, uh, ended up becoming a strategy, mm. uh, that we employed. So like the mindset, and this was pre, uh, Magula, yeah. Somalians. This was like predominantly, uh, black people in townships operating puzzle shops. And then in, in townships, then you will have like a, a big shop, right? And then shop, right? Would then, you know, absorb some of our customers. Sure. Um, you know, also people find pride in going into with a the shop plastic bag. With yeah. the plastic yeah. bag. Yeah. You know, they find pride in walking down the street with, you know, heavy plastic bag and then they walk 10 step, they stop, you know, they're like, <laughs> <laughs> Surgery. You know? <laughs> you know, and, and they like, end up saying, hey, this is all gold. Yeah, yeah, Baba, I'm Baba, what are you selling that? <laughs> you know? And then, and then if it's a, if it's the old mama, they call for, hey, Kosi, Kosi. Mkonya. Yeah, you know. Um, so, so what would happen is, uh, when people get paid, they go to ShopRite mm. or a Discom, uh, back in the day. Uh, you know, any big retailer, they would go there. Uh, to spend their money, but as the month goes on, uh, you know, the, 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 the wallet shrinks, they don't have enough money. Now they come to spaza shops, uh, to take credit. Eish. Now mm. it's like, you know, and they were clever. You know what they would do? They would, uh, just before the week, just before the week, they know they're going to come. Yeah. Then they will come to you and buy a small pack of sugar. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. It's like, you see me, you know. <laughs> Come back, but sugar, and then the next day they'll come buy bread, and then next week, you know, then is, they come. Is it because they're familiar with you? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I think it might also be, you know, uh, uh, some psychological things where, uh, cause we know when you go to shop, right? There's no credit. You've paid sure. cash. Forget it. You know, you don't get things. Uh, you know, people will come. Young Palet Olu ended up. Or Munda Itat, Venus Mesa Itati. Yeah, short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. So, so what, what, what my dad, uh, you know, and I, we, we decided to do, or what he recommended that we do was we actually, uh, when we pack the shelves, mm -hmm. when we stock up the shelves, we should have one or two items. Of everything. Okay. So if it's a roll on, uh, you know, you have one or two. Uh, if it's sugar, you have one, two, and you put them in the front. Yeah. But you can see. So when you walk in, you're like, there's no stock, mm. you know, so like, hey, 
hey, can I please, you know, hey, it's bad, whatever. They're like, I'm a Reno, it's, <laughs> rough. No, it's rough. I'm going to do it. It's you. rough. Yeah. It's, yeah, and then you're like, it's because of people like you. Yeah. You take credit. Yeah. You take credit and then you don't pay and they take time to pay. Yeah. Uh, so it's like, so you can see it's hard also for the person asking to be like, yeah, and it's like, eh, hey, I can't even go stock. Mm. Uh, so you have limited stock on the ship. It looks empty. It's like, but at the back, is there's it, so much stock. Is it not also the reverse of like psychology to say stock is selling out? Would not somebody look at it that way? Yeah, I suppose. I suppose there are a number of ways uh, to do that. Yeah. But, yeah, no, no, no. No, but but you actually have to have proper stock. Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah. you have to. Because what, what happens is when people walk in and they and they look, it seems like there's nothing. Yeah, yeah uh, okay, I see you, you know, mean. psychologically, they walk in and they're like, because sometimes that's how people buy. You know, the same way you go into a shop, right? You walk down the aisle, you are planning to buy three items and you leave with 15. Yeah. Sure. Same psychology. You go <laughs> in there. Sometimes you just want to, you see something's like, oh, Gonji, I, yeah, need, Gonji, I need that. Yeah. Uh, so you need to have a full shelf that's like front facing, that's beautiful. Yeah. You know, that's so, and there's also, you know, the merchandising thing is not only a shop, right? Even at puzzle shop, there's pride. In, you know, the, the, the package design, mm. like even a thing like a well designed, uh, chakalaka, you know, cool. It's like, sure. it makes the thing beautiful. For I, sure, I yeah. kid you not. So if it's like basic shelving, uh, maybe the wall is white, uh, when, when it's fully packed, it's beautiful. So you, you actually need like a full, you need like a fully, cause then that increases the chance of, People buying more, more stuff. Because sure, yeah. then they're like, I want that. And then their eyes are roaming. Too, yeah. And they're like, oh, and that as well. And that, that as so well. True, and that yeah, as well. Yeah, that you know? So, true. so, 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 so it helps. It helps. It helps. It helps in that sense. So, so that's, 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 that's the one, the side, one of side of it. it. The, other side, the other side, I think to your point, to your point you're absolutely you're right. right. You know, yeah. uh, people uh, also people want also to want see, to they want to be enticed. enticed. You know, it's mm. those, those basic, basic fundamentals, fundamentals of, of, you know, uh, uh, persuasion uh, and playing with the mind. Um, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a great story, uh, by, by Miles Kubeka, uh, mm. of course, uh, yeah, during yeah, the heyday yeah. of, uh, for your big, big dream, <laughs> you know, where, where he actually used the psychology of busy, like, it looked like, so he created the perception of demand, uh, to actually create the actual demand, um, you know, where, uh, he would, he would hire people. Uh, or get people to to create a longer queue. Like if there's an event or a festival, or whatever, and then people have multiple, have multiple options. You know, you can wow. buy a put of horse here or there or there. His was it looked like it was banging, like people. So he created visually. It looked like. Why are people Why standing, are standing in that queue? Yeah. I want to taste Why that. Why is the queue so long? Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. he was, he was clever, clever with it in that he monitored the queue, the queue where, where, you know, the you know, queue the would queue move and then looks like it was disappearing and then at more people. Again. Yeah, that's like, <laughs> I know, I know. No, 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 no. There must be something there. <laughs> sure. There be. And because it works because you are in an environment where you are there. It's yeah. not like a drive-through where you are looking to buy and leave. You yeah. are there, the yeah. stuff happening, so you are more chilled, so you have the time to actually spend in a queue. So that sure. psychology uh, is, is dope. It's dope. Yeah, it definitely is. Thanks for sharing with that, that with us. I mean, we, I've also heard a few of the same guy. I mean, he's got like so many things that he's done. I think, is it the Vuyo? No, not Vuyo. Is it Vuyo's? Yeah, yeah Vuyo. Vuyo's. The apparently, big thing is, apparently, the, thing, the whole thing is uh, it's not real, if you want to call it. Yes. Like the whole Vuyo's, he stole it from, not stole from it. From the show. From, from, the, from, the, from the ad. Yeah. From the from ad. The yeah, ad. he yeah. took it from the ad and then he made it a thing, which is actually a cool story mm -hmm. on its own. Man, no, it's not cool. It's genius. <laughs> it's genius. Sorry. It is <laughs> absolute genius. You know, sure, in, in, yeah. in advertising, I think this is what we should be looking looking for um you know i, I worked with a, with a with a with a great chief creative officer who used to when we review ideas if it ha if there's any if there's a hint that whatever you presenting looks like some use it forget, no don't don't use it it's been done oh, oh wow. it's been done yeah so we had two categories it's been done hasn't been done yeah um, you know, and, and Mouse's story is like, it has never been done. Mm. Yeah. Usually with advertising, advertising will, 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 will mimic life. Uh, but in this instance, 
advertising uh, 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 from from the advertising like a real life thing happened. Sure. Uh, so he saw the ad, the Hansa ad with Vuyo, uh, with Vuyo, you know, he looked at it. Uh, from his perspective, he actually thought it was a based on a true story. For sure, yeah. And then he did research. Uh, incredible mind, incredible. He's he, he's he's a genius. He is um, actually, yeah. You know, so so and he he's training his background, his career. He's a systems engineer, so mm. he thinks about things, he breaks down things. But he was intrigued and interested in this thing, so he thought it was like a based on a true story. Yeah. But then it was like he did research, like no, actually. This is a fictional character yeah. created by an advertising agency. And then he was like, oh, okay. And then he registered the, the Vuyo Vors thing. Yeah. He registered the name uh, and then he just ran with it. Wow. He and he used the it. same logo, same, same logo, everything. CI is the same. Same logo. That's why I'm like, it's, it's genius. Yeah. In that the ad campaign spent money creating equity around Vuyovors, they spend millions creating yeah. the, 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 the Vuyovors brand. And then when he comes, he doesn't need any more advertising. Sure. Uh, it's done he, for him already. Yeah, it's, it yeah, is, yeah. yeah. And, and for some people, they actually thought it was a, 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 a Hansa campaign extension, which would have actually made more sense. For sure, yeah. Uh, but then he was like, you know, uh, he, he ran with it, became, he actually lived Except the jet, I think we are in the end. <laughs> uh, but he became that character. He wow. lived. He was everywhere. Newspapers. Richard Branson. He course, he became yeah. the the Vuyo Wars character. He was Which, probably called Vuyo also. Yeah, yeah, no, no. <laughs> in fact, yeah, no, 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 no. He's Vuyo Wars. <laughs> he is. He is Vuyo Wars. What an iconic time. And I mean, yeah, that was an iconic advert, which turned again into a reality. Um, yeah. No, we have so much to talk to you about. I, I, think, I think now let's, let's look at the shift, right? Yeah. We understand your background. We know yeah. how you grew up. But how did, how did you know about advertising? How yeah. did advertising come into the picture now? Mm. Where did you learn about it? Because, you know, as kids from the township, we don't know these fancy job titles. I you know, being a TV, police yeah. officer, being a nurse, a lawyer a is DJ. also fancy. DJ. Yeah, you know how to be. It wasn't a career okay, back then. Yeah. 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 It's a whole you're wasting your time. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. So so and, 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 and before I answer that, I think part of the work I do through the the, the Think and Year brand, I've, sure. I've actually got an initiative called uh, the the Impact Learning Initiative. All it is is about exposure. Mm -hmm. Exposing young kids to different professions. Um, and so I got exposed to advertising. Yeah. I got exposed to advertising, interestingly, at school, exposed to it as a thing. I wouldn't say also as a career per sure. se, but I, I got exposed to it as a thing. And I think that's the important thing about school. If it's in the school curricula, it must be important. Mm -hmm. So we were, I was in grade nine, then at seven, um, you know, we would, in the English class, we, every now and then we would do like a comprehension test. You know, they'll give you a piece of text, you read, yeah. and then you answer a bunch of questions. So in that week, it was under advertising. Uh, and I still remember the article. It was, uh, the, 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 the headline of the article was called The Walking Billboard. Uh, and it was Michael Schumacher in his suit. Mm branded the reason i fell in love with advertising was because that was the first time in my life i got 98 <laughs> <laughs> percent you were like i'm not turning back <laughs> this is it, this no, is it no. baby <laughs> you know you know uh, uh the the sometimes these signs are subtle but for the sure. universe will give you signs yeah. Sure, yeah. that was the sign for me and and for me it was like 90 I got interest. I was like, I need to understand this thing. For I sure, kid you yeah. not, from grade nine all the way, I was just obsessed with advertising. Um, and for me, it wasn't even like a career thing. It was like, I just want to pass. Yeah. Uh, you know, I just want to do well because I did well in this thing. But I think also the, 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 the subject matter, the content was interesting. Sure. Uh, and then did research. Uh, and I found out that Rosebank College offered uh, a, a diploma 
it was called DAM, uh, i.e. Uh, Diploma in Advertising Management. Mm, damn, uh, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Diploma in Advertising. Uh, but then quickly, quickly realized that it wasn't worth the, pra- the paper it was printed on. So our industry is very, you know, um, uh, 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 it's, it's, it's an elitist industry. You have to come from a particular school, unless sure. if you know somebody, you know somebody, mm. uh, but you have to come from A triple A, A Vega. To be taken uh, seriously. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. And at that time, I didn't even know about all these schools. Um, and how I found out about Vega and all these guys, uh, I think one of our lecturers actually felt sorry for us. So imagine you're in an advertising class and the lecturer says, do you guys actually want to do advertising? <laughs> <laughs> and what was your answer? I, I want to know this. Like, yeah, where we were, I mean, Firstly, I was just confused by yeah. the question. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> we here. <laughs> I woke exactly. up this morning. <laughs> we are here. Um, you know, and, and I think going back to this idea that the universe gives you signals, I think he knew, there's something he knew that we didn't. Yeah. Uh, he knew that... Uh, these guys are not going to go anywhere with this thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so you might get somewhere, but to get into advertising, you're not going to go that far. For sure. I mean, and then we asked, and then, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, sorry, carry on anyway. I mean. And then and then he was like, no, if you really want to do advertising, uh, the, there are schools called, he mentioned Vega. Hmm. Uh, at that time, we nobody has a computer, nobody has a laptop, you know. Uh, I, I think particularly because of the demographic of the students that sure, 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 yeah, if you yeah. had a laptop, nah, I know, cheese boy. Cheese boy. <laughs> oh, she's boy. No, do not. <laughs> I went to the media center, did research. I looked at the fees. Uh, that's when I realized though, that I know actually I am where I should be. Uh, I was like, the fees were re- one year's tuition at Vega would pay for my whole diploma. I could even get an apartment. Whoa. Uh, I, c- I could live with one year's tuition. Uh, that's when I knew, but the seed was planted. Uh, fast forward, um, Rosebank College and mm-hmm. Vega are under the same umbrella brand. Uh, I think it is called Evitech. I don't know if Evi- yes, Evitech yes, yes. is still there. So, so they were under the same thing. So Vega at that time had an initiative called, uh, Imagination Lab. Imagination Lab is like a compressed version of a three year degree. So you do everything. You do marketing, advertising, Photoshop. Mm. Critical thinking, you do everything. That's the one I did. Oh, is yeah. it? Yeah. Imagination Lab. Vega, right? Yeah. For a year. Yeah. Covered everything. Oh, yeah. that's, uh, that's amazing. Yeah. No wonder we're sitting next to each other. <laughs> uh, no, that's dope. That's I'm the dope. One that's dope. I didn't go to uh, But, but, but you didn't go. No, I didn't go to Where did you go? I went, I did sports coaching. Okay. Yeah. No, that's dope. He you wanted know? to coach by fine. <laughs> no, that's dope. That's dope. I believe. Uh, diff- in fact, I think we need that kind of thing where yeah. you don't study advertising, going to advertising. We need people from different yes. industries to give uh, different perspectives. For sure. um, but how I actually, I think also it was luck. Again, you yeah. know, this thing of listening to signals. Uh, so I got my diploma. I struggled. I couldn't find a job. Mm-hmm. Applied everywhere. I remember Alan Devonport was like the biggest agency. I went there for an interview. They were just looking at me. I think they were just admiring my confidence. For sure. <laughs> with a <laughs> diploma. <in>. Yeah. <laughs> I think they were just admiring my confidence to come there with a diploma from Rosebank. Uh, cause part of, then I realized that, hey, I'm doji. Yeah. When they were like, okay, what did you study? I'm like, Rosebank College. They're like, oh, so Rosebank in Rosebank. I was like, no, no in Bramford. Bram. <laughs> but there's actually Rosebank a in Bra. I no. knew, no, I knew. <laughs> <But he's lying. laughs> no, I knew so, this, it was over. So, sorry, but was it, just, just to cut you there, what, what roles were you applying for now when you're going into these agencies or, it was or strategy brands? roles. Strategy, it was strategy okay. Strategy roles. To take you back, uh, so going back to that story of Vega had Imagination mm. Lab. In my second year, uh, actually ended up doing three years at, um, at Rosebank because in my second year, uh, my younger brother passed away and then I was like, there's no point because my whole life was centered around me doing for him what my parents couldn't. So when he passed away, I was like, but then my dad convinced me to carry on. Yeah. Um, and then, so imagination lab existed. 
but it was for students coming straight from high school. Mm. And then what they later realized was that they were not taking it seriously, you know, fresh from high school. So they decided maybe we need students who have some sort of qualification. Sure. And that's when they reached out to the students who studied at Roseburn College. Luckily, I was part of that group. Uh, but again, I, I almost missed it because the lady called me. Uh, her name is Lucy. I'll never forget. She called me. She's like, Bhosi, uh, we've got this thing. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a one-year learnership. Uh, in my mind, I'm like, I'm struggling with a yeah. diploma. I'm yeah. literally, what am I going to do with a one-year? And then she's like, let's do this. Come. If you still don't like it, then you can decline. Yeah. yeah. When I walked in there, I saw the name Vega Imagination Lab. I was like, is this the Vega? And it was the Vega. Damn. Oh, wow. Fast forward, I was like, when I, the first thing I, so firstly, I didn't want to go. When I got there and I saw Vega, I didn't want to leave. Um, so then I was like, I got there, I did the whole thing. Uh, luckily, I planted the seed also in my mind that I wanted to get a bursary. The first thing I asked was like, how mm. do you get a bursary to get into Vega? Fast forward, it happened. Yeah. Uh, I got a bursary, studied at Vega. Long story short, I'm sitting here. Ach! Ach! <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, your story is just so amazing. I know that we obviously can ask you so many questions. I mean, yeah. Like I said, your CV is head and up. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, yeah, Jose, there's so much to talk about. Yeah. Uh, we just talked about um, the Pasnian. The Pasnian. Sort of like, you know, you just got to <laughs> yeah, know. How you got into advertising. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rose so Bank, Vega, Zong. <laughs> the fact that you discovered um, uh, Ro Rose Bank College in Vega. And yeah. You had a dream to go there and people were laughing at you or sort of laughing about um, Rose Bank being in, Br Rose Bank College being in Brown. In Brown. <laughs> yeah. you've, gone, you've gone through it all. <laughs> you've seen it all, man. You've seen it all. <laughs> So uh, now let's let's, let's talk, talk more about your present. Okay. Right? And when we talk about your present, I think there's the. I'm not saying it's the only iconic thing you've worked on, mm -hmm. but this one I think it's one of the biggest things because mm -hmm. when we were chatting earlier, you were telling me about this campaign you worked on for for African Bank when they were repositioning, and you got the privilege to work with um, the legend himself, Mr. Ricky Rick. And like, what inspired this collaboration and how did you envision it uh, resonating with the audience, like the campaign itself? And before you, before you answer that, sorry, I mean, mm. you were the creative, chief creative officer on that advert? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. That's so strategist and office and, and creative. Both, yeah. Both on Straight. that advert. Yeah, 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 yeah. Heads. <laughs> what, an, what an iconic advert. To, just before you even answer that question, what an iconic advert. Yeah. And not only because of the situation, yeah, but yeah. having such an artist on mm. there was... Did it, did it get, I mean, please um, answer this later on. Did, did it ever get, ended up getting taken down at some point also? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there was a pause. Okay. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't call it a takedown. Takedown. Okay. Yeah. Pause, yeah. nigga. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I mean, tell us, what inspired the collaboration anyway? And like how, how you guys envisioned this whole advert with Ricky Rick? So uh, I was a Black River. Uh, so we had the account for a while, actually. Uh, you know, I think that's the interesting thing when you do interesting work. Mm. Um, you know, we had the account for about three years. Um, and then uh, Sbu, who's now the CMO, came. Um, and I think, you know, you know, we always look at agencies or the people at agency side. But I must say, man, credit to people from the client side. Yeah. I think, I think that's the genesis of great work, not agency yeah. side. It takes bravery. It takes yeah, bravery from, from their side. Yeah. Their side mm. It requires openness. It requires one to have a visionary mindset. It requires one to be open. It requires one to experiment. All these things, actually, that we, we only imbue or, or, or liken to advertising agencies, I think there must be remnants of it inside from the client side. Uh, so I think it starts with the client. So the client came, um, you know, as like, and he came from KP Tech. Yeah. Um, you know, so he comes, is like, 
there's something about this brand. Um, and I think that's when people move with intention. Uh, that's powerful. When you're not moving for a paycheck or it's just another, you know, I think he came with intention and ultimately, uh, you know, talking about this work, I would say was initiated by his intention to do great work. So he saw the potential of African Bank. So the brief comes, okay, guys, there's something special about this brand. Uh, you know, it's like the story, how the thing, how the brand came about, uh, you know, and then, so that's the brief. Then we start working on it. Um, Did you the know, brief have Ricky Rick at all? No, 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 no. The brief was African bank. Okay, just make yeah. the bank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing, yeah. make it look good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so, so it's like there's a story here, hasn't been told. Uh, we need to tell that story. So that was the brief. Uh, but even then, that's like high level. You needed to do the work. Yeah. So we did the work. The work started with workshops, strategy workshops, and then the research. Uh, the, 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 the consuming of content. I think what most people focus on is the technical side of it. You know, they'll go, the market share. Yeah. Oh, oh FMB is doing so, you know. Uh, but here we went into the brand. Um, I mean, from a strategy perspective, it started with the workshop and then the strategy development process where you actually do the research, understand your category, understand your competitors, understand the market, uh, and then the brand itself, the brand itself. Uh, I feel like that's a job on its own. Yeah. Uh, you know, just understanding the brand, what this brand is about, and then going deep into the DNA of the brand. Cause I think that's where the biggest opportunity was. Um, and in fact, that's where we double clicked, um, you know, so in fact, how I, how I articulated from a strategy perspective is that every bank that exists, exists for the purpose they come from their departure point is a business opportunity perspective with African bank. It was way deeper than that. Yeah. It was way deeper. And, you know, people might say hey, it's philosophical. It's, it's philosophical. You know, it's like, ah, no, this thing, it's purpose. It's real. When you, when you start to read the story, uh, understand why the brand came about, it's real. When it enters advertising and we put uh, the banner of purpose and then people are like, ah, no, it's purpose. It's not. This is real life. The founders, hence I'm saying, you know, there's a difference when you're doing something because there's a business opportunity. And then you're trying to solve a real problem. Uh, you know, so we go through the whole strategy, research, understanding, and then realizing that at a time when black people were not allowed to sit on park benches, these gentlemen said, we're going to create an institution that's going to empower black people. There, there were no opportunities. But now today, if you put it in the context of 2024, people might say, oh no, African bank is being purposeful. It's real. Like they were trying to solve for real problems. In fact, I was watching the, the, the 1994 debate between Nelson Mandela and de Klerk. Yeah. Um, what African bank was trying to solve for, that was the crux of the debate. How do we get African people, particularly black people, uh, to progress and go up, uh, socially, economically? Uh, you know, so that was one of the biggest things that uh, for African bank, banking was not a business opportunity. It was an opportunity to add value and improve people's lives. Today, it might sound like a fancy thing because it's in marketing and then it's purpose-led. No, it was real. Uh, you know, I think it's one of the few brands that came out of there's a wrong that needs to be fixed. Um, you know, And then uh, that was part of the articulation was that even when looking at the competitors, everybody was future focused and they were looking into tech, yeah. you know, how to simplify banking, for example, or how to, to do whatever. It was tech led. Yeah. And then in tapping into the African bank thing, we actually looked back to the essence of why this bank existed. Therefore, the bank's power, the bank's, um, you know, uh, advantage was actually in its origins why it came about and the story of how it was actually built 
is incredible. Um, you know, I, I, I find it amusing when I'd be disappointed if the two of you fell off mm -hmm. and you can't build anything solid because of indifferences. Yeah. Um, and that's what happens. People can maintain small, 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 minute, easy businesses like we are printing t-shirts. Yeah. They argue, they debate. Yeah. People can't keep, for me, those are easy businesses. No offense. Yeah. When you compare it to building a financial institution. It's a whole I mean, different story. It's, it's a it's beast. Rules, it's it's a, also, yeah. even worse, even worse, the context mm. from which the, the bank came, the context, the height of apartheid. So you can't do much as a black person, but that's why audacity to believe is not just a tagline. Yeah. It's a powerful thing. The audacity to believe that you can actually build an institution that's going to empower people who are being deliberately locked out of social and economic opportunities. It's insane to, to, to think about it and the journey that they travel through. Um, you know, so everything that I'm saying, you know, it was through the reading of stuff, uh, the understanding of the, 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 the business. At this point, it doesn't matter who's the competition. Yeah. Sure. That's how I felt about, not in an ego, but it was like, no, man, this thing is so significant. It doesn't matter what FMB is doing, NetBank is doing, Standard Bank is doing. It doesn't matter what, you know, when you do important things, significant things, you actually have no, and this is not a fancy thing to say, you have no competition. Yeah. For me, African Bank was miles ahead mm -hmm. in terms of uh, what using the category itself, i.e. what financial institution can actually do. Yeah. From that perspective, for me, I always say that you don't have to bank with African Bank. But everybody, maybe especially if you're black, but everybody should be proud. You don't have to bank with them. Yeah. Obviously, if you, if you, if, if you bank with them, uh, you know, that's a bonus, <laughs> but that's one. And we're talking real life now, I'm not talking advertising. Um, you should be proud. If you look at our history, where we come from and what those men tried to do, you should be proud. Has it got a similar story to Epepsi? Apparently, Pepsi during the apartheid time, Pepsi was one of the good companies that I think they, I can't remember if they stopped producing or, but they were definitely not for apartheid. Yeah. They were against it like that. Is it a similar story to that? Where I, I, mean, think, it's I, like I think it's empowering a, black people. I wouldn't say em, 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 empowering. Yeah. Um, I would, I would, I would say maybe not supporting the apartheid yeah so i think there's a difference you can you can halt business yeah. to indicate that you're not supporting or in support i think empowering requires active contribution and participation sure. uh, but sure. also that's something that we don't overlook um and i think that's ironically that's what hurt uh pepsi you know when when they disinvested uh deinvested and they left and then you know you know, Coca-Cola stayed and Coca-Cola is the brand. And then the brand that sh we should be going like PepsiCo was for us in a way, uh, you know, it's tough. Uh, you know, Coca-Cola had monopolized, uh, you know, distribution there everywhere, um, you know. Yeah, but that was sort of like the, 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 the from a strategy perspective, sure. finding the thing. So, so this audacity thing is, is, is not just a word. Um, there's, there's so much power in that. If you look at all the challenges that, I, I kid you not, uh, if you look at all the things that African Bank went through, uh, the bank shouldn't exist, but it is through this sheer audacious spirit that the bank exists. Mm -hmm. Curatorship, not getting support from Nelson Mandela, uh, cause Dr. Uh, uh, Matsuenyan speaks about that when they needed funding. Uh, Mandela said, no, we can't, you know, uh, it, it was, I, th I think sometimes I can understand where Mandela was coming from, uh, where they're like, Ish, now we are democratic, you know, if, if, if we, you know, I, I don't know why they were thinking like that, but it felt like 
it wasn't democratic in their eyes to support a black business, to give money. It was like, no, no, you have to, they find other means. They put their own money in it. Um, you know, all of these things, the curatorship recently, you know, um, the founders finding money, uh, for funding. Uh, you know, they had to travel overseas. Uh, they went to, to, to Barclays even before that. Um, you know, they tried to raise funding. The mentality also of black people, they gathered people to say, we're going to start a bank. Uh, we need money. Um, and that's where the, the, the story of the 70 rands comes from. Uh, you know, I think it was said that, uh, you know, to make sure that this dream is realized, we have to put something on the table. Uh, and then, you know, 70 rand was initially was in essence, the, the initial investment into 70 bucks. 70 and what year was this? Um, I think it was in, in the 1960s. Uh, I forget the, the actual year. So yeah, the, the, the mentality of, you know, raising the money, uh, within amongst ourselves. Uh, in fact, there's, there's a story of Dr. Richard Maponya saying at that time, I think there were 20 million Africans. As in there were 20 million black people. And one of the ideas was if we could get one rand from each person, yeah. that would be a 20 million. That's the funding we need. For sure. Um, obviously that never mm. happened. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I thought it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a neat idea. It is yeah. a good, neat idea. I mean, if you had to take your Twitter followers and ask them for one rand each. No, absolutely. I absolutely. Mean, you could become. Uh, I think in strategy, it sounds well, but execution. <laughs> <trust> execution. <me>. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I think. We could all ask them. Yeah. One rand. Yo, Funan, one rand. Yeah. 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 Once people realize. It's, it's, it sounds like it's easy. Yeah. 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 Once people realize how much you keep getting, they're like, whoa. Exactly. Yeah. But really um, interesting conversation about the 70 rand thing, the 70 rand investment. Mm. Yeah. That was the initial investment. That was the initial investment. Uh, and that was just, not just in uh, the, the, the investment, uh, also the commitment, yeah. uh, to actually make it happen. Yeah. The idea was that we shouldn't leave without anything on the table. Yeah. Uh, so that, that the significance of the 70 rent was not the value in itself in terms of what you can buy with it or what you can or cannot purchase with it, but just what it meant. It was like, we are doing it. Sure. Mm. So now where does Ricky Rick come into this now? The brief has come in, but hey, we need to make uh, yeah. this bank uh, something. Where does Ricky Rick come in? I mean, was there anybody else before him uh, that you guys had looked at? What was the, the thinking? So obviously the strategy is done. Now we need, um, you know, to tell the story uh, through the TVC. And uh, was TVC your first choice anyway? Was that the brief from the beginning? To get yeah, a TVC only. yeah, yeah. We needed we needed a brand film uh, that was going to set the tone and actually house the 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 the, the entire story, sure. capture the essence. Uh, you know, you could use other channels, but was I it think the best way to tell the story. I, th I think yeah. At that time, I think it was one of the best ways to capture the essence of what the, 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 the story is about. Obviously there were other channels, other iterations out of home, different things that we were doing from a brand perspective, from a retail perspective, yeah. digital, uh, you know, social media, out of home activations, all of those things were there. But I think the, the, the brand film was, 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 was important. Um, and, and the brief was to first crack uh, the TVC. Okay. Um, you know, and were they, what were the other objectives was selling product? One of the objectives or was just to get African bank famous amongst South Africans. Yeah. 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 Loosely. Yeah. To, to reintroduce the brand okay. into the market, uh, in a refreshing way. Um, I don't remember if refreshing was the actual word. Uh, but I think for me, that's, that was the, the outcome, uh, out of that. The idea was it's a, it's a new brand in essence. Uh, we needed people to know their real African bank because now you're dealing with perceptions that are anchoring the brand into a particular space. I was about to say, sure. Surely you they know. had some perception. To yeah. Some no, there were, there was very unfavorable perceptions. Uh, the, the, I think that's the, the, the power of the ad. It really shifted. Uh, some of these, uh, perceptions that were hurting the brand, uh, being known as a loan shark. Yeah. Being known that the only thing that we're good for, uh, is, 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 is loans. 
um, and knowing that the brand and the business had to grow. Uh, they have to have a healthy balance. You can't do that by giving out money. You have to gain deposits. You also need to get money. You need to yes. get money. Mm. So the brand has to be seen and perceived as a traditional bank uh, in that sense, that I can actually open a bank account, not to have an account with another bank and then come here for a loan. Yeah. Uh, you know, we wanted you to do everything in the bank. Okay. Um, you know, so... The, 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 the story, uh, was there, which, you know, <laughs> there's a backstory also to the, to the, to the TVC. Um, you know, we went through the, fa- the, the, you know, the same thing. Yeah, no, system. no, no. We, we, we went through. So strategy was done, uh, approved. Now we had to crack the, 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 the TVC. Yeah. And I think in hindsight, it was, it was one of the most difficult TVCs to crack, um, in that. To actually tell the African bank story, either you do a feature film, which is like two hours, 30 minutes, or you do a documentary. Yeah. yeah. A short That's documentary. how you tell. Or a, big, a long documentary. You need, it was long format. Okay. Mm. Technically, to tell the proper story, okay, it's long format. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You have to tell yeah. the real, real story. But now, coming to the advertising world, it had to be 90 seconds. Um, in fact, I think the original brief was 60 seconds. Uh, but then we went through different rounds of creative reviews, yeah. client presentations, getting bombed. Boom, boom. It was, it was tough. So we had internal creatives, uh, couldn't crack it. Freelancers couldn't, couldn't crack. crack it. Were you guys always suggesting people? Was it always the person involved in there or was it just different types of ideas on how to It was this? ideas. Okay. At this point, there's no, there's no, it's, there's no person. Yeah. Mm. There's no face. Um, it's just cracking the idea. Yeah. It's, it's bringing the strategy to life. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Uh, outside of, um, and I think that's an important thing for the, the brand to exist on its own and in isolation. Influencers or people that you use, they should become a seamless plug into the thing that you built. Yeah. Um, cause I think it would be dangerous to build everything around someone, uh, you know, to build the brand itself has to stand on its own. Mm. For sure. So yeah. we were trying to crack the, the, the idea. We went through multiple rounds, multiple rounds until, um, you know, client was like, what nonsense is this? Mm. Uh, is this boo now? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, no. And Spoo, 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 I like Spoo. Spoo is a very chilled guy. Uh, but he was, he was upset. He was livid. Um, you know, and I can understand, you know, I think there's a, there's a, there's a way you can miss a strategy or a brief. Uh, I know, but we, we missed it miles. Like we, <laughs> we, 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 we Looking missed back it. now. Yeah, no, we, we, we missed the tone was wrong. The ideas. Um, you know, and, and that process actually taught me to think about creativity within the context of the problem that you're solving. So guys were being creative. Yeah. You know, creativity is creativity. Yeah. Yeah. The ideas were creative ideas, but they were not creative for the brand and the problem. So they were not ideating for the problem. They were ideating for for the sake of ideating. for the sake of yeah. ideating. They can come up with uh, ideas. Yeah. yeah. So also maybe I don't want to say they were ideating for the sake of ideating. They just couldn't connect. For sure. Okay. Uh, yeah. You know the, the 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 ideas had to be born out of this thing, but it was almost like there were ideas and then they were like, oh, there's this thing. Do they work? Yeah. You know that yeah. was a challenge. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. We went through multiple rounds and then. Uh, when Spoo said, <laughs> this is nonsense, uh, that was real. That was real. Then you realize that, no, it's real. Yeah. Um, and then through that process, I was like, you know what? Let me give it a shot. Yeah. Mm. Um, so and, you took off your straight head. Yeah, no, no, no. And also it's difficult, eh? Yeah. Uh, you also appreciate the process of creative development. Uh, it's a different, you almost have to become someone different. Yeah. yeah this yeah, is, yeah. that's why you have different teams. That's why you have strategy and creative. But the key is to make sure that there's a seamless connection between the two. Now, the challenge was, you know, one person writing the strategy uh, and then having to come up with creative. Uh, so when, when, when I gave it a shot, uh, you know, I, 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 
I took a different route. Yeah. Uh, Cause we were like, you know how ad agency is. You work on this brief and then you're touching this brief and then you on this thing. You know, it's like, even if you're working on a pitch, it's for after hours. Yeah. You know, oh, it's yes, like, or yes. maybe some agents might have a pitch team, but you never work on one thing. Uh, you know, but what I decided to do is to sort of isolate my creative development process from the agency workflow. Um, you know, uh, so what I did was, uh, I booked myself into a hotel for a week, for a week, for a week and a bit. Uh, but then I ended up staying for longer. Which means the ideas are rolling, eh? Yay. So, so, and I've actually never told this story. So I booked myself, uh, so the agency is in, is in, is in, is in Rosebank at the zone. Uh, there's a, there's a hotel in, in Melrose, the capital. Uh, really dope. The aesthetics were nice. Uh, I think that's why I stayed longer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, so I booked myself there and literally, that's the only thing. There were meetings there and there, but that's the only thing I thought about. Yeah. Um, you know, I thought about the brief, what this thing is. Uh, you know, uh, fast forward, uh, um, you know, we, 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 so I went through that process and I had different things inspiring the process. Yeah. Um, and, and, and the thing that inspired, uh, the script was was hip hop mm. um so is that what you're jamming most of the time yeah so so actually i was listening to to jay-z's uh 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 run this town what's a three billionaires yeah. <laughs> yeah you know so so i'd be there get out of the shower Naked, nothing. Sure. Just listening to this thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, played. It was on high rotation. That I was just listening to that song. Uh, you know, and and that became a huge inspiration. Um, and I think that's when I also appreciated the song even more. Sure. Where, sure. Where, where, if you look at those guys and you and you read the lyrics and you watch the video, uh, you know, it was it was it was like it was like they were campaigning for their own successes uh later on they were prophesizing yeah. their own um you know the swag the we are we are them yeah, type of we, thing we the it. you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. jay-z is him rihanna is her kanye the confidence it's like we, we are uh, i can already hear the oh, man. <laughs> but but i must say you know there's, a, there's actually a better version of run this town which is Weezy's version. Is it? Little Wayne's no version is better, way better. Was this like you should listen to this. Was it back when he was Little Wayne? Yeah, no, yeah, not, yeah. Not Weezy not the baby. No, yeah, Weezy a baby. <laughs> <laughs> the F Leave Weezy alone. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, 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 if, if, if you look at Weezy's track record, eh, for, if he jumps on a Jay Z, he makes sure. In fact, anybody's beat. He may. So there's a. You should listen to that. To that one. Um, the. Oh man. No. You know, Weezy makes me. In fact, I had, I had visions of like when I when I open up my own agency, Weezy is the chief creative officer. <laughs> That's so. I'm telling you, That's man. That's so dope. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so we'll so. Definitely check the the, the, the other. Please, uh, please the, check yeah. it out. The the the, the 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 similes. It's like he just goes, uh, man. When when I heard him rhyme, brr. You know, it's like what brr? Brr, like brr. It's cold. Oh. Uh -huh. Um. He's like, oh man. Uh, so he says, I'm colder than br. I'm colder than br. Add another three hours. So it's like, it's colder than beer, like, you know, cold beer. Yeah. But if you add another three hours, it's like, brr. Ooh. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's like, Ooh. And Ooh. You, it's like, some lines are not, they're like, and it, he's not like a deep, yeah, but it's yeah. clever. Yeah, it's you wordplay know. at its best. It's man. wordplay. Yeah. You know, he's like, oh man, just listen to, from the beginning, J. Anyways, uh, uh, so I was listening to that track. And so I likened the founders to Jay-Z, Rihanna, and Kanye. 
you had to have that kind of confidence. Again, going back to the context. Yeah, yeah. yeah apartheid, yeah. height of apartheid. Yeah. We are in 2024. People are doing things. They don't have the confidence. People are scared. Yeah. Can you imagine if those men were living now in 2024? Different story. Uh, right? I don't know if the context was the catalyst for them thinking like that, but um, for me, the way we live life, when I think about it in that context, I'm like, it makes no sense why we should be scared. Yeah. Why are we scared to do stuff? Today, why are we scared yeah. to talk about stuff? Yeah. Uh, you know, so those guys represented the founders. Uh, in fact, the Rihanna for me represented the women who were the, the wives of these men. Yeah. So when you listen to Rihanna's chorus, she's in support of these two guys who are coming in and she's like egging them on. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the role that the wives of the, 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 the men played. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, and I think it's a, it's a significant role. Uh, which might not, you know, get, 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 uh, you know, a day of light, um, you know, on it. Uh, but that, that, that was the inspiration there was the tone and the energy and the confidence. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, 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 and the other inspirational music that I listened to is Kanye and Jay Z's, uh, Otis. Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, dope you track know, too. Dope track. Dope track. There, it was the energy between the two of them. The, that kind of, you know, going back to this thing of you have people starting businesses. Yeah. They no longer the business. To build something like that of significance, of that magnitude, a financial institution, you needed founders who get each other. Um, and when you listen to Jay-Z and Kanye, it's almost like they're completing each other's verses. Sure. The, the, yeah, that's what they did on Watch the Throne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the whole thing. Yeah. There's no breaks in between. It's like Kanye takes over from mm -hmm. where Jay-Z ends. It's like, it's, it's just like, so I was like, this is the kind of understanding that these founders ch must have had for them to make this mm. thing, yeah. this thing actually happen. And, and, and the script is also written in that fashion. Uh, so if you read the script and you listen to it from a hip hop perspective, that's like a hot verse mm. where you have African bank, in essence, bragging in a, in a tone that's acceptable. Sure. Uh, you know, in, a, in its own tone, in its, with its own DNA. Yeah. Saying, I mean, you know how rap is like, you know, I'm the best, mm. you know, you know, and we the, way, the best was walking in that ad. Yeah. He yeah. was walking with some yeah. stuff for sure. Yeah. No, 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 no. Did no. you guys shoot it like a music video? Like, did you? I don't anything? know. Not like a music video. <laughs> did you pick up like, you know, <laughs> those like hip hop moves and those kind of angles? And, like, you know, when, when I, when I, when I, when I briefed the directors, uh, so I played those songs. Yeah. I okay. played Run This Town. I played Otis. Otis yeah. yeah. So I think, I think, I don't know. Um, you know, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, when, when I lost my train of thought. Uh, we be, we be no, the oh, the hip, so yeah, the track, yeah, so, yeah, the, 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 the yeah. script is, 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 in fact, the, the opening line was when I wrote it, it was like in the middle, it came in, in the, in the, in the middle. Uh, and then there was a young lady, um, you know, who worked with us. Uh, and then she was like, why is that not the opening line? Yeah. Um, you know, and that line is, who starts a bank with 70 rands? Mm. So the, from the opening said, it's like, mm. I want to hear the rest. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah. Then it's like, in fact, that's a real question. Who yeah. does? Yeah. That That's a proper, forget being clever. For sure. That's a, who does that? Only African bank yeah, does yeah. that. Mm. And then we, as the script goes, it's like, you know, when, when every other bank was started, it was a business opportunity. But for African bank, they saw an opportunity to uplift the lives of its people. Yeah. yeah. That's power. Uh. So it's almost like you transitioning between advertising and real life. Yeah. That's real. Yeah. And, and, and I remember Sui and I, we, we were at the, at the shoot, we were like, the story is so powerful, even though I wrote it. The story was there. Why Ricky though? The story was there. So, so Ricky was recommended by, uh, you know, Blank Canvas, uh, um, you know, as a, as a, 
as the voice mm. and the and the tone um and and i think also it was a genius idea yeah genius idea in the sense that usually and i've seen it when brands want to appeal to youth the brand becomes youth mm. yeah. where they change the tone they will add neon colors mm. <laughs> true, they, true. They, lit, they literally augment the dna of the brand yeah that's so true but the genius thing with how we executed we didn't have to change anything yeah ricky was that symbol of young people and the culture um so i think that was just, that was such a genius thing and and a dope strategic solve if you look at most brands they change the tone they become quirky or they want to be funny or they want to fit in yeah. they want to yeah. fit in trying to yeah. fit in uh, yeah you know they will do things within the amapiano genre they mm-hmm. do yeah so the brands change themselves but with this we didn't have to change that it was such a delicate um uh, even though sometimes I, i say these things as though they were they were they were they were you know well thought out sometimes things just work out you know yeah. things work out in that way where ricky how i knew ricky was the guy uh, apart from the conversations was on shoot yeah on day two. um there's a scene where ricky goes um uh, oh there's the mom's are eh uh, mtadami and ricky go eh mom's oh in that place when we were there that's in soweto right that's in, yeah. yeah i think it's in pimville yeah uh there's a there's a there's a school around the corner so we were shooting in the afternoon and it was after school the kids were there and they saw ricky oh hey mr cotin ah yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah no that's how i knew yeah that's how i knew that's how i knew that ricky was the guy mm. the way those young people were going crazy yeah it was like fandom at another level and and i knew that you know the the the, the genuineness of how we executed it mm-hmm. uh so on paper he's an influencer but i think the way we had done it it was much deeper than that yeah it was way deeper than that and i think it was it was much more profound than the way a typical you would think about it typically yeah. it's not hey, we need an influencer who you know it was like there was something special about that entire process uh you know that whole thing um it it it's it's one of those things that even metrics can't tell you sometimes um i think when we look at metrics we sometimes feel like they give us peace of mind that we've made this decision sure. and sometimes it doesn't work out sometimes you don't have the numbers sometimes of course we had with ricky i mean ricky you know it's ricky it's come, a, on. Uh, come on <laughs> come on <huh>? come on come <laughs> on come on well jose emilio we've talked about quite a lot obviously the inspiration yaga ricky rick uh your inspiration through the music to get the advert yeah um obviously going and there's so much more lips i mean what what else do you want to ask i, I, I think the most important thing the <laughs> yeah. the, the uh, magic question here yeah. is that the ad really drive um a return on investment did it drive sales advertising works <laughs> advertising works okay, advertising that's a good answer yeah, advertising answer. works and i'm not saying all advertising For sure <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah when 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 it's done right um it almost i think that ad was so powerful and so we we actually didn't have like a retail component to it retail was intended to come after the ad mm-hmm. uh, so there's no retail It's but visually a story, right? yeah it's a story, story yeah. but visually in different scenes we show you products yeah. yeah but it's not over it it's not like hey you can see there's you know no. <laughs> so it's more brand yeah. it's brand okay it is okay. pure that's what i love about this work pure brand building mm. not force fitting products sure. yeah. just telling for me this is like the best case study to say you know advertising brand building uh influences uh sales mm. um you know 
when that ad broke out, there was instant shift in how people viewed wow. and perceived the bank. Wow. People saw the ad and they were opening accounts. So it shifted perception. It shifted. That was and that was the job. That's big, man. It that, shifted that's perception. That's bigger than yeah, sales, yeah, right yeah, there. So we weird. had a, we had a, we had a. You know how it is. You, we have WhatsApp groups. Yeah. Uh, we had a WhatsApp group. We were sending screen grabs of, I've just opened an account. You know, it's like, you know. Remember when I said, we don't have to bank with them, but we should be proud of African Bank. Yeah. Mm. That's what people actually felt. Uh, but then it led to the opening of the accounts. Um, you know. Which, which for me is like sales. There's, there's, there's obviously the sales. It's, it's, a, it's a specialized world. Yeah. You know, when you convince someone to convert now or it's later, or whatever yeah, the process, yeah. there's a funnel of conversion. You know, we talk about sales. It's technical. There's science to it. Yeah. Uh, but when you talk about advertising, brand building, uh, persuading or empowering, maybe instead people to make an informed decision. Um, you know, I think. That campaign demonstrate the power of doing a proper brand campaign. Yeah. Uh, there's a, one of the things we saw was somebody who, because African Bank had a, had an investment account with good interest. Yeah. There are people like people in high position. You would not think of them. They have investment accounts with African Bank because of that high interest account. Mm. And then, but it was only for that reason. And then when they saw the ad, all of a sudden, People were saying, I'm opening an account for my daughter. Mm. All of a sudden, it was a family brand. Mm. All of a sudden, it was a brand that people could associate with. Mm. Everybody was sending screen grabs, open an account. Uh, I, had a fr- I have a friend, uh, Lindsay, she's in Cape Town. She's like, listen, she opened an account, da, 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 two accounts, and then she sent me screen grabs. She's like, listen, <laughs> listen, it's done. Yeah. Yo. It's done. So, so it worked. Nice. It worked. That's always good news to hear. I mean, you know, we see adverts all the time and yeah, media advertising is always yeah. around us. And I don't want to use, I don't want to say the advert was an advert because like you said, it wasn't really an advert. It it's was a more a brand story. Yeah. For yeah, you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love it when something so natural happens mm. to reap yeah. uh, some results because we see adverts all the time and we could talk about some adverts and ask, do they actually reap yeah. results? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's good to know that the Ricky advert, obviously, I, know, I, want to say the, I don't want to say the Ricky advert, the but African, the African Bank. Bank advert that featured Ricky mm. um, had a big impact in the bottom line. And yeah. I love how you told the story from just the whole thing, from the music sure. to the hotel, sure. the collaborations. Mm. There's so much that like you can tell when something good yeah, um, it comes out. You, you took yeah. time for it. I mean, you yeah. went to a hotel and you were listening to Jay Z. And, and we yeah. just see it on TV. We yeah. think it's easy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Easy. We're like, ah, yeah, it's yeah. just two minutes. They went to studio. <laughs> yeah. There's no strategy. <laughs> there's, but there's a team. lot of work that goes into <laughs> no, it. No, there's, there's a, a there's a there's a lot because also you other other financial institutions are way advanced in terms of their journey. Yeah. Mm. So there was a lot at stake. We presented to Exco. Um, in fact, the ad had different endings. Uh, you know, Exco didn't have a liking to, uh, which is understandable. Uh, so in the, in the original script, I had the ending where there were going to be other people who actually flank Ricky. So in the end, Ricky comes, uh, into frame. Yeah. Uh, mm. and then he encourages people to join the bank that believes in them. Um, because we were, dabbling or this word of audacity is in the payoff line. Uh, so we did research, different connotations, what it meant. Uh, you know, I knew that to almost not translate it, but to speak about it in a way that people speak about it in the real world yeah. will resonate even more. Um, so in the original script, actually, I had... Um, uh, and then there was a debate around female representation. But in the script, it wasn't a gender thing. It was more of a story thing. Sure. Where Ricky would come into frame and then he would be flanked by Laduma and Theo. Mm. Laduma would come in and say, Ibanesbin. Mm. And then Theo would come in and say, Ibanesbin. Yeah. That was the money shot. That was the ending where once it breaks... People don't just say audacity to believe. 
Now we get into eh una le sibiti man. Eh tsa mbule African yeah, yeah. You know, now you start getting into the culture sure. of you you become part of the culture in a natural way. You start to build that association uh you know it's it's you know similar to the vuyo vorst thing where there's a thing that exists mm-hmm. and then you just beautifully t- attach your name to it i kid you not my belief is that when people talk about eh una lisibiti yeah they would be like african, african bank african bank was going to feature there uh but then over you know through multiple presentations are like nah you know and then we went through phases mm-hmm. of but we need in fact greek was like where are the women uh which is what I lo- so Ricky was so involved yeah that's what i loved about uh you know working he was so involved nice. in the process nice. the reviews the script yeah um you know in fact i think there was a line in the script that he was like what if we say it like that um and and it sounded beautiful uh so he was so involved he nice. was, that's the and i think all these things add up to this thing so he was in it so even when you look at him and he was in it he wasn't an influencer looking for a paycheck and i must say this the people loved ricky ricky loved the people he was you know after the first day of shoot na i was convinced that ricky can retire just because of his humility yeah Everybody loved Ricky. Ricky loved. He spoke to everyone. Yeah, he did. Yeah. There was um, you know, there was a uh, you know there's always this thing of oh, you know, it's Ricky, it's Ricky. He was so chill. Reza Discopa, see Reza, you know. Sure. It was it was it was it was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. the kind of guy you'd find yeah. in the Ghost Plaza show. Yeah, yeah. Ghost Plaza show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And yeah. I love the fact that his last post unfortunately and it's unfortunate was the ad mm. was the advert um, yeah, and yeah. like how does that even make you feel I mean having... oh man so so for me you know I always thought that I would have a career in 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 hip hop um <laughs> as a rapper, not too as, late, a rapper bro. as a rapper <laughs> as a rap no no the thing is I feel like you need a voice eh you yeah. need, there's a certain type of voice you need yeah uh I thought I was going to be and I went through different names uh what was your my initial one? name was um <laughs> it was gimmicky though it was a uh, it was um and many more um you know it was a kind of like a gimmicky thing oh. you know I'm begging the the posters they be like uh uh you know label uh zero and many more Aich. and then i would just show up <laughs> <laughs> and then and then and then i settled on oxymoron okay uh, the reason i settled on oxymoron i was conflicted there was tension i was like hip hop requires you to be a bad boy i'm not a bad boy uh. but i was like this name this name will create the perception that uh, but it's oxymoron so <laughs> the bad know, boy yeah it's like he's a combination he's like yeah. you know it's like it's expected in a way you know uh, get bad boy so if i do something good it's like uh, but yeah. you know yeah so i always wanted to so hip hop has always played a, a a huge role uh i think this hip hop is powerful mm. uh and the music is but for me personally hip hop resonates uh which is why which is why i love wheezy so it means so much to me in that for me because of the inspiration of the for script sure. and how it came about it was literally written as a verse so him performing it for me is like that was the official last verse um uh, mm. by the type of thing that was the mm. official last verse um you know and and uh i think it's such a, a such a profound and a uh, beautiful thing in fact when I had actually forgotten about this. Mm, I want to show you something. Uh I was going through I was going through uh some stuff, né? Back in the day. Yeah. Is this uh, a view or what? No, no, I want to show you something. The, uh, and you talking about your oxymoron era. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'll tell you now. Okay. Um I hope it's still there. Just mix it name. 
I hope it's still there. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> and and I, I want you to say it. Uh, you don't have to read it out loud. You can read. <laughs> read the date. Yes. And then who is it sent to? Yeah. This was the 4th of August in 2017. Mm-hmm. And it was sent to Mr. Makado himself. Mr. Makado himself. Yeah. So I sent him a DM. Um, at that time, uh, I was going through stuff. Um, and actually, I'd never shown this to anyone. Yeah. I was going, this was Shout in 2017. Pleasure, yeah. I mean, pleasure showing us that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I feel honored. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm part <laughs> of the secret society. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What do we want? Okay, the date. I see the date. Yeah. 4th Go. August 2017. Shucks. Uh, I sent him a message to say thank you for your music. Uh, I was going through stuff and there was a there was a song that spoke to me. Yeah. Um, and I actually saw this afterwards. Mm. I was like, damn. Uh, I wish I had shown you. Yeah. yeah. Like that moment, I completely forgot about it. Uh, so for me, it was like a full circle moment where I'd sent him a DM uh, to say, hey man, listen, I appreciate you. Damn. I was just saying thank you. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and the last time I saw him, we were in a audio, recording audio. Uh, I never say this about men. But, you know, Ricky was a beautiful man, man. Mm. Pause. Uh, and I'm, and, but you know what I'm saying, man? I'm so, <laughs> pause for real. But I'm so glad that you honored him um, in such that way. Because, I mean, you, you know, you, told, you, you, you sent him a message about yeah. his music. And then, but you found another way to thank him, actually, without you knowing you were Deep. thanking him. Mm. Dope. Pause. Mm. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, that's um, dope. That's dope. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. man. So, Bohosi, I think we've had you for quite here for yeah. some time. Uh, we want to let you go very shortly. But before we let you go, there's obviously the one thing. Mm, the future. So, we understand your past. Yeah. We've covered your present. Yeah. Yeah. But there's something big coming. And sure, it's yeah. about one human. Yeah. And it's a summit. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, and we want to follow this because, you know, you just talked about, we just spent this whole episode talking about yourself and your kids yeah. and what you did for yeah. African Bank yeah, yeah, yeah. and the Ricky brand. And how there's this one human summit. Yes. Yes. And on. how can people get involved? <laughs> sure, sure. Like, yeah. you know what, what, what is this? So the One Human Summit, as the name suggests, uh, is a summit for one person, mm-hmm. hence One Human Summit. So unlike other summits or conferences where it's about having multiple speakers covering a plethora of topics uh, with a billion takeaways, you yeah. know, this one focuses on one individual. So the purpose of the One Human Summit is to identify Mm-hmm. single out, celebrate, and amplify what I refer to as humans of impact. Yeah. I think it might sound philosophical, but it's real. We spend most of our time being busy. Hey, mm-hmm. we are busy. Mm-hmm. From brief to brief. You're just going through... Uh, but I think there's value in focusing on things that are significant. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and this platform uh, recognizes people who are working on important things. And sometimes those important things are not so obvious, uh, but there's meaning to those things that they're building. And this is not a platform for people who are well-known or celebrities. It's not about being a celebrity. It might be somebody from Limpopo yeah. who's doing phenomenal work, work that is important, that is adding value, that's changing yeah. things. Like Squamata. That's <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean if, 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 he's, if, if he's adding value to people, uh, who's to say? Uh, and I like that in that when you say that, people will literally laugh maybe. Uh, and, and I always say that you might look at other people and say, no, obviously they are on no, the platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. You might think, uh, you know, Oprah might, no, it's not sure. that obvious. It's not guaranteed. Sure. There's a criteria that we use and each criteria is different each time. Uh, but it's, a, it's about these people, um, you know, that do phenomenal work. And, and how it works is, you know, you go in, in a typical summit or conference, you go there, you sit, you take notes, you drink coffee, eat a croissant, go home, network, 
before you go home, you network and then you yeah. go home. Yeah. But here, uh, we are literally going to experience the depth of this individual. So it's divided into one. There's mm -hmm. the get to know the one. Yeah. And then there's the experience the one's work. And mm. get to know the one. We will have keynotes, interviews, one-on-ones. But what we try to amplify is the human in one human summit. Yeah. Unlike other conferences where if you come from Microsoft or you come from Google, you come there, you're prim and proper, you have to represent the brand. Sure. You have to be sharp. You have in to... the brand. You, you know? Mm. Yeah. But here, for, for instance, uh, the person we have, you know, um, they say that one of the people that played a critical role in their lives was their mother. Mm. So imagine having a one-on-one -on -one session with the person's mother, yeah. having real conversations. For sure, you yeah. Know? And we go through stuff. We go through challenges. The person we have, he works. He works. And he doesn't work, you know, he works. Like his thing is he just wants to solve problems. Yeah. So that has implications on our personal life where that added to, you know, him getting divorced. You know, it's covering those type of things. Yeah. Like we get, because the professional side is a given, he's brilliant, uh, you know, but then we tap into the human side sure. as well. Because we, we tend to look at like people's, um, what's this, work experience, what they do, what they do. for a living, yeah. and we forget that they are human. They are right? human, exactly. I think just understanding that human element Correct. also, also uh, encourages and motivates Correct. people to also go forward. Because we think Jay-Z doesn't have problems. Exactly. Jay-Z doesn't go to the toilet, but it happens. It happens. So that's the experiencing, getting to know the one. Yeah. And then the other part is experiencing their work. So say, for example, you have somebody who was the first person who gave us this idea of a mobile spa yeah. when it wasn't fashionable. At the event, we are going to recreate that mobile mm. spa so that people can actually experience. And relive that. And relive yeah. that moment and experience the, the, the thing. We actually do have an incredible human. Um, his name is Miles Kubeka. Ah, <laughs> Mr. Miles again. Huh? So, so Miles is an incredible, incredible. So since he's claimed to fame with Vuyovors, quietly in the background, he's been solving South Africa's problems. Yeah. When COVID hit, he was one of the few people on the ground giving out food. Mm. He is... He's got this saying, which I think is beautiful. He says, sometimes it's not the problem itself, but it's the problems around the problem. So he's a systems thinker. He solves, pro I always say, you know, now it's election times. I'm like, what we should be doing is asking Miles, Miles, what are we supposed to do? Miles, what do you need? I kid you not. That man will solve problems. In life, ne? there are people who know nothing. Not nothing in a bad way, but who are like oblivious, like yeah. they don't know what's going on. And then there are people who know how to articulate problems and define. It's like, you see how yeah, the problem, those are the guys we get on ENCA, sure. you know, they define the problems. And then there's solutions. other people who are trying to find solutions, mm. you know. The power with Miles is that he can define the problems and actually come up with a solution for that problem, which he has defined. He's a true strategist. Mm -hmm. He's, I refer to him as a creative solutionist. I remember there are times when I sit with him, I'm like, hey, this guy, he can actually take my job, this guy. <laughs> uh, and, and, and you know when I say he can work anywhere, but he chooses to be in the streets. Mm. He's doing incredible work. He's doing, and I can't wait for people to actually experience uh, yeah. his work. So when is the One Man Summit? It's when on the human ninth, Summit? The One Human Summit is on the 9th of May uh -huh. uh, in Santon. Convention Center? No, no. There's no, there's nothing conventional okay. about <laughs> the venue. Yeah. Deliberately so. So more details will will be revealed, but it's in Santon. At least you know proximity yeah, where you, yeah. you physically, your body will be in Santon. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, the venue is not a typical venue. Okay. Deliberately so. 
uh, we are trying to, I know the expectations for people to walk in, see beautiful drapings, mm. beautiful colors, deco- you're not going to see that mm. uh, deliberately. So my goal is to disappoint you, but <laughs> you're going to leave transformed. Disappoint nice. you in the sense that what you are expecting is not it. Yeah, That's what I mean about disappoint nice. you. Whatever you feeling or expecting, you're not going to see that. But the, the, the thing about the One Human Summit is that we say it's inspiring, it's immersive, it's transformative. In fact, you, the experience, that's my hope, that the experience will put you at a different level. Nice. Pohosi, it was great having you, my brother. My man. Amazing chat. No, thank you. I mean, we still don't feel like, to be honest, guys, you know, we still don't feel like we have gone through everything else. We haven't gone through all our questions that we want to chat about. We're just having some technical issues, but what a beautiful conversation on the real, dude. I know when I'm listening to this, editing this later on, yeah. some things are going to click only then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but there's part two coming. There's part two yeah, coming, yeah. yeah but Definitely. Really yeah. lovely conversation, man. Um, if no, had, Just one, one last thing. Um, what's the one question you wish we would have asked you? And please direct it to, the, to our next guest. The one question. Um, geez. The one question that I wish you would have asked me. Yeah. <laughs> Why is it such a difficult question? <laughs> <laughs> you can make it easy. Is that the question? <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, um, what kind of question? Is it like just a general question? Just a general question. Them. Something that you wanted to, something that you wanted us to ask you, but we didn't. Okay. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I don't know, but I can think of something now. Um, oh yeah. When, when did you realize that there's more to life than work? Ooh, perfect. Perfect. (laughs) <laughs> perfect I think let's cut it there I think that's a beautiful question for our next guest mm. um, we're definitely going to have them answer it and please watch the next podcast definitely definitely I'm a fan now thank you very much he's a <laughs> yeah. subscriber and if you guys have not subscribed please make sure that you do subscribe this is of course Umshuti Obashuti this is Spaza Talk and I'm never alone I'm always with the boy Boop, 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 sophisticated in China. <laughs> <laughs> and of course our amazing guest Bohosi how can we get in touch with you on LinkedIn Bohosi Mot Mutsehwa. 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 Yeah. Mutsehwa. Can we get in touch with you? No, definitely. Via LinkedIn, yeah? Please, please, please. We'll definitely do that. But shout out. Thank you guys so much for listening to uh, Spaza Talk. Please check out our previous episode. It is episode 57. And shout out to our sponsors, Color Space. Color Space. All right. I will check you guys in the next episode, a special episode. This is Spaza Talk. Mshutu Abashuti is out. Peace. Ciao. Introducing Color Space a stock photo platform dedicated to showcasing images of black people. Whether you're a professional photographer or you just know your way around a smartphone, sign up, submit your photos and start earning through your creativity. Visit www.colorspace.co.za.